G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you and Joe. It's so good to see you too. Great seeing you too, Matt. I hope you and you are super well. Now, we had to convene an emergency uh, podcast slash think tank session, didn't we Joe? Because something quite serious unfolded. It was a revelation for me, an epiphany. And I think we should talk about where... Now, this is in regards to the Z9, and I know we're probably a bit Z9 saturated at this point in time, but this is more than just about the Z9. It's actually about the Z9 and Adobe software and how I basically think Adobe are selling the Z9 short. People who use Adobe software need to know this right now because they are basically, if they use the default settings... Uh, when it comes to sharpening, they are getting, they are, they are being completely misled by what uh, Adobe are doing versus what, say, Capture One are doing. And ultimately, what I want to talk about today is a baseline and a baseline that we should expect as technicians. Like, if you bought a roll of Coda Color Gold, you'd expect a baseline of color, of grain, and the speed. You know, it needs to be 100 or 200 or 400. It began because I was shooting with the Z6. I was really happy with all of my images, night shots, day shots, particularly the grey areas. Um, the, the images were super clean, beautiful. Bringing them into Photoshop or Lightroom uh, as raw files and then, and then working with them through fo Photoshop as is my workflow. I've now got a Z9 that I'm playing with and I'm bringing the images in and I'm thinking, boy, that's, that's a lot of grain. Okay. It's, it's 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 not what you've seen. No, with it, the Z six. No, that's right. And it's a, a quite try and explain how how different. I would say the image quality that I was getting out of the Z nine was maybe thirty percent as good as the Z six in uh, through the shadows and in dark areas. Specifically for grain. Specific only grain. That's, yep. that's all we're talking no about. No sharpness, not colour rendition. And I, I said this to you, that I was saying to myself, if I'm, I'm going to go out at night in challenging conditions with my Z9, I'm just going to bring the Z6 along in case I see a scene that I really like and I, I think I'm not going to be able to capture with the Z9, which is astounding when you've got a flagship camera in hand. And what we discovered through us arguing about, no, the grain's... Uh, quite prolific and you're saying no but it's a beautiful image you're sending me I don't see any issues because we're trading in raw files here is that my workflow is Adobe and your workflow is Capture One. That's right so basically I was Joe's been sending me files for the last couple of weeks sort of going oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about what's going on with this grain and I'm going I haven't really seen it in my work and I suppose we were a little bit up in the air as to what, you know, was your camera different mm. or is the fact that you are you were showing me just pretty much all birding images? So is it is it the fact that my backgrounds are textured and colourful? Like, I don't know. And what was amazing to me is that we tried to normalise the, the difference and actually say they were the same. But just for fun, we were at my computer, we opened your raw file and lo and behold it looked different in capture one and both you and i are like wtf well the first thing my first reaction is well i've got to get a better monitor because i'm looking for i'm looking for reasons why matt's image or matt's uh, monitor looked so good and my laptop which is a fairly high-end laptop wasn't looking good at all. So my first thing was to say, no, it, I've got to get a, a better 4K monitor or a 5K monitor. We're in Capture One going uh, completely different. Okay, well then let's open the file using a Camera Raw, the latest version of Camera Raw from Adobe in Photoshop, which is your workflow. So we do it and it's like, they are completely different. The background noise is really sharp. Basically the Z9 in... Adobe Raw is is just being over sharpened from my perspective, and in Capture One it looks much much more filmic. Now this is default settings, so we can see here zero adjustments. This is how it comes in. Capture One has these profiles built in, so you can change it 
to match built in. And it's going with Nikon Z9. The file looks great. Here's the info on the file. It's from a Z9. Shot on the 200 to 500, ISO 640, 3200, 6.3. We're shooting at almost 500 mil, and that's sharp. That's looking great. This is where things get weird. So up here in the background, th this looks lovely. It's smooth. There's just the smallest hint of grain. And we're going to go into 200% just so this has a chance of reading on YouTube because YouTube is slightly lower quality. But there's the bird at 200%, and there is the boat at 200%. Again, file untouched 100 percent, great and this is where things get a bit weird have a look at that background there there's suddenly just through this area here look at all of that noise grain noise whatever you want to call it this is the capture one file no sign of it it's completely different three little bokeh balls and that is a profoundly different outcome this is the same file same file both at 200 percent now here we are in lightroom this is the default setting this is the default on how it's imported eventually it was here in this detail drop down menu that we started to work out what was going on now this is all of the default settings and the way you can get default is to just double tap and so, you know, you can make them go back by double tapping. You bring it in, that's what it's going to look like when you are in Adobe Raw or in Lightroom. And that is what Capture One looks like when you bring it in. Much more painterly, a much more soft background that's out of focus, which you want it to be. You want it to be soft and out of focus. Quite different. Lightroom, Capture One. Lightroom, Capture One. Very different. Now, don't worry about the color because that's something that we can adjust. The only way that we can bring this down is just to bring all this all the way down. And it makes a bit of a difference. So let's just do that again. You can see it there. I hope that translates on YouTube. But that is the default. And there it is without it. So that helps a little bit. And then we can also increase color noise reduction okay so we've gone from reduced not reduced reduced a lot it's changing things a bit but that's the max that we can do that's the max i don't know this software if you've got any i mean maybe if we did things like this well there you go that's softening it i hadn't played with that one before but i still feel if you look through here in this grain here yeah that's sort of doing something else it's not really working with the grain even when we do all that have a look here in this shadow through here. It does look like a different file, doesn't it? But it's absolutely not a different file. Just to reiterate, look down the bottom here. 2462, 2462. The way color is rendered, the way everything is rendered is different. But here is the Adobe file adjusted. We're smoothing it as much as we can. If there's other settings, let me know. And you are welcome to jump to the 17 minute mark to see our solution to this problem. For me, really, the most important part of this story is, besides the fact that this is happening, is that if you were a Z6, Z7, Z62, Z72, D850, D750, whatever user, you get a Z9, you open that file as it as it's defaults to, in any of Adobe, it looks significantly different. And it is a bit situational. Like, I wouldn't say it's in all circumstances. No. But but it's different and it's profoundly different and it would be enough of a difference to go and Joe basically in essence was quite disappointed. Yeah, I was I was looking at the picture quality thinking my Z6 out is outperforming the Z9 in a lot of the challenging environments that I shoot in. And again, let's we have to be super clear here. This is simply in regards to pixel peeping grain. Pixel peeping grain. Oh. It's not in regards to any other, and you, you need to qualify that because people will just go, my <laughs> my Z, Z Z six is outperforming my Z nine. End of story. No, we are specifically talking about That's pixel right. peeping of grain. But this 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 camera ends up a lot in birders' hands, and Joe and I have had a lot of deep discussions about why we think the birding community has such a strong voice 
in the online space and we also think that the birding community spend a lot of time looking at detail which is fine it's not a it's just an assessment it's not a judgment or a criticism but i tell you if those people who are using the z9 the same way that joe does and they're using it through adobe's products they're going to be getting their file and their camera severely misrepresented and it's deeply disappointing from adobe that this is happening so what was the resolution? I've just got to go out and I've got to buy a copy of uh, Capture One because bringing the files into Capture One was unbelievable. I it's, mean, the, the images look like photographs, like they're, they're smooth again, you know. They're, they're and, beautiful. And I mean, for me, the, the, it went from, look at all this grain, it's like pimples, like micro pimples or micro dimples yep. on the file. We weren't shooting at base ISO to... In Capture One, pretty much that grain all, all, all but completely disappeared. It was creamy. It like, was very nice. Yeah, exactly right. Yep. And the other thing that I found interesting is Capture One actually uh, has all of Nikon's profiles built in. So the profiles you have in the camera when you go into the eye menu and you might choose vivid or flat or whatever, they're all built in to Capture One. And I would suspect that Capture One have gone to a lot of trouble working with Nikon to get that right. So far, and you're a user of this software, I, I use Photoshop. We haven't been able to find that Adobe has these same profiles. And what that says to me mm. is they haven't done the work. And, and these, like what we've seen here is a profound difference and it would be enough to make someone go, huh, right. And then, honestly, Joe's gone from being, oh, well, to... This has solved it. This yeah. is great. Like, honestly, you yeah. must have felt like you bought the camera again, well, right? It, it like, was, tell me how you felt, really. <laughs> it, was, it was a massive relief, actually. So, so I, I went from saying, well, on the balance of things, the camera is, is a big step up from a, a Z6 on the balance of things. And then once we found this, there was instantaneous joy because I realized, well, hold on a second, this camera rocks image quality as well not just with its sharpness not just with the 8k not just with the 2.3 crop all the other things that the z9 offers and the bigger battery we know all the things but all of a sudden we're looking at the quality of the image coming out and i'm saying wow this is this is amazing and it delivers now what <laughs> you thought it should have what i expected it to so i i mean we were both in shock honestly it's that bad and if you own a Z9 and you're using Adobe and you're not aware to play with this stuff, like maybe you just use their presets or whatever, but this is the default settings. But he's been doing this for 25, 30 years. I've been, I've been using Photoshop for all that time, for print publications, for all of that stuff. But my point is, mm. you didn't think to change it. And I'm just wondering how many people out there haven't thought to change it, have wondered what this grain is. Yeah. And just gone, it's not, I'm disappointed. Well, the things that I, that I generally change are uh, nothing to do with the, the sharpness yeah. or the noise, uh, colour noise reduction. The things I change are all the light levels. Yeah. I wonder how many people, like everybody's workflow is different, right? Yep. But I think we can say here that you might not be the only person, even so you've worked with this stuff for decades. Yep. You might not be the only person who doesn't play in, or who, or who has. And why? Because all the cameras didn't require it. I've never had to do it. You've never had to do it. So yep. what, what I'm disappointed in is that Adobe are delivering something which is delivering the Z9 in an, a, in an inferior capacity to how Capture One delivers a Z9 file. It is a profound difference. And again, to reiterate, if you're a Z9 user and you haven't been playing with this stuff and you work with Adobe software, you really need to take a look at it. It's, it's chalk and cheese. So what you can do is you can create your own presets. Now, there are plenty of people that make their own presets and sell them. All you've got to do is find out what works with the, the type of images that you would generally create and create a preset that works for that image and just make that a part of your workflow. So when you bring something in through the Adobe Photoshop uh, raw uh, file converter, 
all you do is you apply the preset you've worked out that's going to work for your Z9 and it's going to then simplify your workflow. You won't have to rely on programs like Topaz Denoise or Sharpen or anything like that anymore. So, so for me, um, and, I, and I, take, I take a large variety of photos from birds to cityscapes to landscapes, all of those issues just melt away. So there you go. So look at the presets. The things that we played with were color noise reduction, we played with sharpness. We we actually dropped the sharpness down to zero. Zero. I can't reiterate this enough. And I've you know I've heard a few murmurings out there of people who've been disappointed with noise performance. And I've been like, I don't get it. Mm. And then you kind of go. I mean, I think what's most interesting to me is like, am I normalizing myself? As in, I love the Z9 so much so that I want to see something that isn't there. And I think this is the saddest part for me out of this whole story is one, did I normalize myself? Well, in the end, I found out that I didn't. But two, I reckon there's a lot of people out there who are falsely disappointed and stop, change your settings. What I would like to talk about more is what, what is Adobe up to and why, why are they getting it wrong, honestly? Is this a universal setting? Because I don't know if you know, but every camera has its own unique raw converter. Every camera is different. So, what you know, what's going on there when Adobe are an absolutely epically massive company compared to Capture One? I don't know what Adobe like. I, I don't know what Adobe and Nikon are doing there, and I and I find it strange that this has landed. Turning the texture down. Interesting. My point is that out of the box, this thing makes files that I would say look pretty unpleasant. That's what they look like out of the box. We've got to bring down texture, I reckon. Maybe not that far. Maybe that's, I mean, that's up to you. Bring down texture and bring down sharpening. And now we've got a file that I think looks similar to Capture One. It's actually probably slightly smoother when you bring texture down to zero. But out of the box, people are getting a much more grainy look. This is what we saw. And I've recorded this after we recorded our session. It's finally looking similar. Thank you so much for joining Joe and I today. It has absolutely been spe spectacular to see you and to see you. Well, we look forward to seeing you very soon. And if this is your first time here, Joe, is it your first time here? Uh, it's my second time. Second time. If it's your first time here, I'd love you to subscribe and come back just like Joe did. And uh, please like, jump on my website, mattirwin.com. And uh, Joe, just before we leave, I wanted to hint at something big we've got coming. Do you want to Do you want to well, drop any sneaky hints? Because I don't want to steal your thunder. Look, uh, we've had a product in development for quite some time now that we, we spoke about. Yeah, we fantasized about it. Let's just say it is going to be a big announcement. I'm excited. I'm excited. So, uh, I don't know what else I can say without giving away too much. What, what's our ETA? Roughly. I don't want to put you uh, under pressure. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to say four weeks. Four weeks. I can't wait. <laughs> you can't wait. You don't even know how much you can't wait yet. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Matt.